Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. If you find this video helpful, please click thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. And if you're looking for more videos on graph theory, you can search Miss Hearn graph theory. In this video, we're going to talk about spanning trees. We've previously seen that trees are graphs that have no circuits. Much like a real tree, a graph theory tree has branches, but it doesn't loop back around and reconnect to itself. The number of edges in a tree is one less than the number of vertices. As in this example, where the graph has six vertices, but only five edges. If we were to add a sixth edge connecting any of the existing vertices, we would create a circuit and we wouldn't have a tree. Another definition that will be useful to us when we're talking about spanning trees is a subgraph. A subgraph for a graph is a graph whose vertices and edges are subsets of the original graph. If this is our original graph, an example of a subgraph would be this smaller graph that has four of the original vertices connected by four of the original edges. Here's another example of a subgraph for that same graph. Notice that this second subgraph has the characteristics of a tree, whereas the first one didn't. In the first graph, we had a circuit. But in this subgraph, we don't. Also, this second subgraph includes all of the vertices from the original graph. Since this is a tree that includes all the vertices of the original graph, we call this a spanning tree. A spanning tree for a graph is a subgraph that includes every vertex of the original and is also a tree. Let's find a spanning tree for the graph below. The first thing that's useful to observe when you're trying to find spanning trees is the number of vertices, edges, and circuits. This graph has eight vertices, nine edges, and two circuits. A spanning tree for eight vertices must have seven edges, not nine. And we know that trees don't have any circuits, so we must remove two edges and break up those two circuits, the square circuit and the triangular one. There are many possibilities for doing this. One of them would be to remove the far left and bottom right edge from the graph, effectively breaking the two circuits and bringing us down to seven edges. But we could have also possibly removed the right side of the square and the right side of the triangle. These are just two of many possibilities. So either of these would represent a correct answer to the question. Let's find all the spanning trees for this graph. This graph has seven vertices, seven edges, and just one circuit, that square. A spanning tree for a graph with seven vertices has to have six edges, not seven. So we know we're gonna be removing one edge and we have to, by removing it, break that circuit. So removing one edge from that square will always produce a spanning tree. And there are four edges we can remove. I could remove AD and get this spanning tree. I could remove AB and get this spanning tree, or BC or CD. In all of these cases, we have included all of the original vertices and we have no circuits, so we have a spanning tree. Let's find three different spanning trees for this graph. This graph has five vertices, seven edges, and multiple overlapping circuits, which means that it's probably possible to create a lot of spanning trees, but we only have to come up with three different ones. A spanning tree for five vertices has to have four edges. So we're going to remove three of the seven edges, and in the process, we need to break up any of the circuits that we can. Let's say that we removed edge AE. Well, then we would still have two triangles here to break up. So let's go ahead and say, what if we also removed EC? Well, if we removed EC, we would still have this large triangle here that would need to be broken up. So I could remove any one of these edges and break it apart. I'm gonna remove CD. So that would give us the graph that looks like this. Notice it has four edges for the five vertices and there are no circuits in the graph. Let's see if we can come up with another one. Once again, I'm gonna start by removing AE and I'm going to remove EC as well. And again, if I remove any of the edges from this large triangle, I'm gonna break up the circuit that it creates. So this time I'm going to remove BC. The resulting subgraph, which is also a spanning tree, would look like this. 
and we were asked to find three of them. So let's find one more. Once again, I'm going to start by thinking about removing AE and EC, but I'm going to pick a different edge of the large triangle to remove. This time I'm going to remove ED. So I would get a graph that looks like this. All of these are subgraphs of the original graph that have no circuits and include all the vertices. So they're spanning trees. And that's just some of the ones that I could get by removing AE, EC, and one other edge. But there are many, many other possibilities. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That helps other students to find the video. If you'd like to see more videos about graph theory on my channel, you can just search for Ms. Hearn Graph Theory.